You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. You probably woke up today to the news that uh, James Craig is suing LSU. The now former LSU offensive line coach who was fired back in June and replaced by Brad Davis. Well, James Craig was fired, and apparently he's suing because he wants to be paid the remainder of his contract, which amounts to about $700,000. Let me go through this um, as simply as I can one time, and then hopefully we never have to talk about this again. First of all, what is it with LSU and, and, and coaches and lawsuits? I mean, John Chavis, this, I mean, come on. Like, can, can we just clean this up whenever these guys are, are shuffled out the door? Um, okay. So James Craig, in this lawsuit, admitted to breaking NCAA recruiting rules. But he has filed this lawsuit against LSU for breach of contract. Essentially, Craig acknowledges that uh, to NCAA enforcement back in May, he acknowledges that he provided gear to a prospect during the COVID dead period. Um, I, I was told back when Craig was fired that it's the kid who went to Cle uh, Tristan Lee, the big five-star who went to Clemson. Um, Ed Ogeron, in a letter to James Craig announcing his termination, said, quote, you also admitted to knowing such contact was impermissible when you engaged in the conduct. Uh, this knowing violation of NCAA rules constitutes cause. So, LSU says, you violated NCAA rules, we got cause, you're fired. James Craig comes back and says, I mean, I did violate a rule, but the NCAA hasn't ruled on anything. So you can't fire me. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing there yet. So that's why this, this back and forth is happening right now. I basically saying that LSU fired him without regards to NCAA fi uh, findings. Okay. There are two reasons why LSU moved on from James Craig when and how they did. Number one, James Craig was not very good. And they had an opportunity to hire Brad Davis. James Craig's offensive lines struggled, and we can talk about the Joe Moore Award, and I get it, and we all know what the counter-argument is to that. What 2019 was, what that uh, offensive philosophy was, how much Joe Burrow compensated, Look at what effectively a lot of the same guys did last year without Joe Burrow. Um, also, James Craig was basically a zero on the recruiting trail. And on Ed Ogeron's staff, that ain't good. You've got to be able to deliver. And they just didn't deliver top-tier recruits. I mean, look at look at the the nature of the offensive line like right now. I mean, it, it, you've got your starting five and nobody after that who has real game experience or real confidence. I mean, a large part of that falls at the feet of the offensive line coach. So this was an opportunity for LSU to pull the ripcord. And they could do it, they felt, with cause, not pay him anything, move on, and get a better guy in here that they felt was a better technician and certainly a better recruiter. Right? We all know LSU was trying to get younger, more diverse on staff, and they did that with Brad Davis. So LSU saw that as a win. That was one. So there were two reasons that LSU did this when and how they did. One was James Craig wasn't very good and they had an opportunity to move on. Number two, LSU is still facing violations in football and men's basketball that are not closed. They have open cases in football with alleged violations involving three players and in basketball, which alleges more than a dozen players received impermissible benefits. Those cases are still open and LSU is aching for them to close the case on football, certainly come to a resolution. That's why Greg Sankey said, we went over this a couple weeks ago. That's why Greg Sankey at SEC Football Media Days said what he did. That back in December, he went to Mark Emmer and said, look, you got to change this. you got to give decisive action. LSU's been waiting for three years in basketball for resolution, and they're the only team that's been alleged to have been involved in this that has had nothing, no notice of allegations, nothing. And lo and behold, the NCAA has now sped that up. But if you're LSU... And you have a coach acknowledging that he had you know, impermissible contact during COVID and all this sort of stuff. 
It, this shows swift, decisive action, doesn't it? So you could say to the NSA, look, we had this coach who was, who was breaking rules. We fired him. Look, we're trying to comply. So it, it makes sense for a lot of reasons why they did what they did. The only thing that, to me, that doesn't make sense at all is why in the world wouldn't you just negotiate a buyout of James Craig's contract? Why? I mean, I get it. You're trying to save 700K, and I'm not, I, especially in a COVID year where everybody lost money, I'm, I'm not poo-pooing 700K, but what are you going to spend now on attorney's fees and court costs and then the, the sort of opportunity cost damage of the publicity of a coach suing the institution? I mean, a lot of people are talking about this. I mean, this was on the front page of, of usatoday.com sports section, not the college football, like on the sports section at usatoday.com. So I... I, I wish they would have just paid the guy to go away, man. I mean, you had a chance to move on. He just wants his money. It, it certainly has to be more beneficial just to pay him to go away than to have this very public spectacle go on. Um, but, y'all, let's get real. I mean, coaches have kept their jobs. I mean, basically what's being alleged here is that James Craig gave some gear to a prospect and had impermissible contact during COVID, and they fired him for it. Like, coaches have done much worse, and kept their jobs. You know I, how I feel about the Will Wade thing, but he is on a federal wiretap talking about a strong bleep offer. Like, come on. You know I mean? And yeah, they're, and they are ride or die with, with Will. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be, but my, I mean, Rick Pitino, Rick Pitino had nine lives at Louisville before they finally asked him. I mean, he's, he's having affairs on tables in the back rooms at restaurants. I mean, he got strippers for recruits. And I mean, yo, I mean, Coaches have done far worse and kept their jobs. This was an opportunity for LSU to move on, improve their staff, maybe save a little cash, and now, because of how they handle it, they're going to have this unfortunate circumstance of, of this publicity. But, like I said at the beginning, I hope this is the only time that I have to talk about this. Pay this man his money. Move on. You got bigger fish to fry. And all that's coming right now with the start of the 2021 season. 